Well, hey friends and welcome back to the channel. We are back out at our remote cabin here in Alaska. One last trip before the season ends. The next time we come out, the rivers will be frozen and we'll be coming out on our snow machine. So we wanted to get out here and see the fall scenery. We have officially been out here for every season except for spring pretty much because spring, the river is not completely frozen, but it's not completely thawed. So you really can't get out on the snow machines or the boat, but now we're here for the fall and it is absolutely glorious with all the colors, orange and yellow and burgundy. It's so beautiful. And I'm super excited because Joe has decided to go on his very first moose hunt. He has successfully hunted bear and deer in the past. He's never moose hunted before. And while we may not get anything, we're going to give it a go. And Parker's going to go out with him and uh, have that father-son experience. Kellen and I are going to stay back here at the cabin, play some cards, and uh, just hang out. But hopefully they get lucky. Who knows, right? There is a ton of moose out here. We were just down by the river there are fresh tracks down by the riverbank. We have a ton of moose scat and lots of sign of moose out here. So 
I'm pretty sure they're here and we have seen them out here before when we've driven down the river on the boat and they run back up into the wilderness. So we'll see if we get lucky. It would sure be nice to fill the freezer with a bunch of fresh moose and what an experience that would be for Parker too. So I think they're probably gonna head out tomorrow and see what they can do. And we're just gonna hang out here at the cabin, have a nice relaxing time, eat some good food. And you guys all say that you love coming out to the remote cabin with us. So we thought that we would bring you with us. It's a little bit rainy and drizzly today, probably in like the, the low to mid forties. Um, it's, it's not too bad though. It was definitely cold on the river. Super grateful for the boat and that enclosed canopy. It just keeps us nice and warm. No issues on the river. We did hit a small sandbar. Um, once we got close to the cabin, but the boat just kind of skipped right over it. So we've had a ton of rain up here. And so sometimes those sandbars shift a little bit. One of the sloughs we, we drive into, the sand shifted out and there was like a bigger point off of it. So we had to make sure to drive around that. And it's just interesting. The rivers out here are like forever changing. So you think you've got the route down and then it changes. But I think for the most part, we've solidified the safe route on the bigger rivers that we take. So that makes me feel a lot lot better. trying to get the heater going in here. We do not have a wood burning stove in this cabin yet. We have a big oil heater. So once the oil is gone in the tank that the sellers previously had, we were, we're going to be taking this out and putting in a wood burning stove, but it's definitely chilly in here. It's like, I don't know. What is that Joe? 48? Mm. It's a little cold. So I think we are gonna chill out for a little bit and enjoy a yummy, warm cup of coffee. And I think I'm gonna do like a chicken roast tonight. I brought chicken roast, probably some mashed potatoes and gravy. And then I brought some Brussels sprouts to saute in the pan. So when we come out to the cabin, I try to do good dinners. Breakfast, we typically have pretty much the same thing, something to do with like eggs, potatoes, maybe some bacon or sausage or, uh, corned beef hash, something like that. But for lunches, it's just kind of fin for yourself type thing. We do simple lunches like sandwiches. A lot of times I won't even eat lunch because we typically eat a late breakfast. It's like a brunch. So I typically eat that and then I have dinner. Um, but we brought stuff to make sandwiches, tuna sandwiches, just keeping it simple because we're usually out here exploring, fishing, doing whatever, and we don't want to stop to come and cook like a big lunch. But I do try to plan like good dinners because it's nice after you've been out all day uh, or like Joe and Parker going out to hunt tomorrow. It's cold, it's rainy. So I'm sure it'd be really nice for them to come home to a nice warm meal. So tonight I'm doing roasted chicken. And then tomorrow I think we're, we're going to do a big pot of beef chili and uh, homemade cornbread. So I'm excited. <laughs> Well, Jill's having a little bit of trouble getting the heater going, and it is a little chilly. My nose is cold, and you can see my breath. That's not okay. <laughs> Hopefully, you can get it going soon. Get the chill off the cabin. That would be nice.
Well, we got the heater going and it is quickly warming the cabin up. It doesn't take much to warm this little cabin up. The cabin is about, what was it, Joe? Like 380 square feet ish. You know, we've got the first floor and then has a loft upstairs with a full bed and um, just, just a cute little loft, which is where we all sleep at night, but it doesn't take much to heat it up. And then we have a Berkey water filter out here. I love the Berkey. Uh, you guys saw Joe filling up our water out at the well. We have an artesian well, which is just a consistent flow of water. It doesn't need a pump. The pressure from underground causes the water to continue to flow, which is wonderful because this cabin is completely off grid. We have no electricity, no plumbing, anything like that. We have an outhouse for the bathroom. And uh, so it's just, just so nice. I've mentioned in previous videos, but then I always think of if this is the first time you've seen our videos, um, that was criteria for us for having a remote cabin in Alaska is we wanted something that had a water source because we already have to lug all kinds of stuff out here when we take a trip, food and everything that we're gonna need for the adventure. I do not wanna be hauling water out here on top of everything else. So having the artesian well is just, it's just such a blessing. So we fill that up, we come in, fill up the Berkey, that's drinking water. And then we use the other jug for like washing dishes and stuff like that. And it works out great. I have a seven. Yeah, Go fish. Sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. Parker, do you have a six? I've been asking you for that the whole entire game. Gallon, mm -hmm. you have an ace? Go fish. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, go fish. Oh, I do have two. Go fish. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Joe is mapping out his little area tomorrow that he's going to hike through with Parker to go moose hunting. And we will see, you know, it, it's kind of a little scary for me because we don't have any way of communicating out here. There is no, um, we have no cell signal, anything like that. So it's just one of those things when they leave in the morning, I won't really know anything until they return home. So they are going to be coming home though in the evening. They're not going to be spending the night out there. So it's just, you know, it's just one of those things. Little Parker's going. He's going to take his little 22 in case they see any spruce grouse or anything out there. Uh, it's it's open season for them, and uh, Parker can use his little 22 and do some hunting of his own. So we'll see. I think Joe might even take break down his fishing pole and take his pole because there's some little lakes and stuff out here and rivers and Maybe he won't come home empty handed. So I am gonna start prepping dinner. I had to wait a little bit because my chicken was still a little bit frozen. I sat this bad boy out last night to defrost and we had it in the ice chest so it didn't finish thawing out. So I had to wait a little bit, but I think it's thawed out enough. So I'm gonna start prepping dinner so we can get to eating. We're hungry, we had breakfast this morning and we just ate some boiled eggs really quick when we got to the cabin because we had to finish getting the gear from the boat. So we're all starving. So we've got this tiny little kitchen space over here, but I think it's quite quaint and cute. <laughs> A lot of this stuff uh, came with the cabin. Everything that was in the cabin conveyed when we bought it and uh, it's, you know, so it just makes it easier on us. We don't have to haul all the dishes and stuff out, but we have bought some more of like the camping pan, uh, plates and dishes and stuff to have out here. And the sellers put this little, little cupboard up here and she's got this little cute curtain. I, we want to turn this kitchen into an L shape so that we have some counter space going across here. We're gonna get rid of this chair. This chair was left here by the previous owners and it's really, honestly, it's kind of dingy and none of us sit in it. We just use it to put like our food Tupperware on. So uh, it would be really nice to utilize this space. This is just really wasted space over here. So we're gonna be putting in an L-shaped counter and we have an extra sink that we're gonna be installing right here for the kitchen and we're going to be running the artesian well, which is right outside the window here. So we're gonna have water that will actually come into the cabin with like a flow valve on it. So we can turn the valve when we need to use it for dishes and stuff. 
and then just have that sink drain right outside. And then when we're done, we can just turn the valve again and that will make the water to where it just continues flowing outside. But it would just be really nice. It's hard to squat down and do dishes on the front porch every time. It'd be really neat to have a sink in here just for rinsing things and having the extra counter space because right now this is pretty much all we have like for food preparation. And then of course having like cupboards would be really nice on the underneath for storage as well. So it's a lot easier to haul things in the winter time because we're on the snow machines on the frozen river. So you can just pull freight and sleds and stuff. And it's a lot easier than trying to fit everything on the boat. So I think this winter when we come out and do some trips out here, which I can't wait, um, we'll probably bring out like the cupboards, the countertops and the kitchen sink. I also have a twin bed, an extra wooden twin bed frame and mattress that I want to bring and put upstairs because right now there's only a full bed up there. So typically Joe and I sleep on the full bed and the boys sleep in their sleeping bags on the ground. And we would like to get eventually two little twin beds to put up there for the boys. But it's so funny. Somebody asked me on the last video, why are the boys sleeping on the ground? And I'm like, why not? <laughs> they're children. They're young. Their bones are young. Their bodies are young. Friends, if I slept on the ground, I wouldn't hardly be able to move in the morning. Like, I just, I cannot, it, it hurts my hips. And you know how it is as you get older, like I need a bed. Even if we go camping in tents, I always bring a blow up mattress and I blow it up in the tent and I sleep on the blow up mattress because my bones just can't handle sleeping on the floor anymore. So they're young and they're, they're, they're okay. They're going to be okay. They got nice, cozy, warm sleeping bags, but I do have some extra things like that, that I would like to bring out. So I'll probably do that this winter. Yeah, you're gonna need him, Parker. Yeah. Especially because he's probably gonna leave somewhat early in the morning. Yeah. So it's colder in the mornings. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All right, love you. Love you, baby.
Love that and first it. sight. Where? Oh, wow. Hot Dog War. And Hot Dog War is right. Mm. Where'd you go? Oh, wow. Um, Police Catching Picker. He's right. Relaxed rodent would be somewhere between a tree. Well, good morning, friends. It is a beautiful, semi-sunny day this morning, so we're very happy about that. You know, when it rains a lot, the moose tend to bed down under trees, so uh, I think now that it's clearing up outside, this is a great time for Joe and Parker to head out. So they're going to be heading out soon, seeing what they can find, but... Did you guys see those little scars on Parker's head? So just the backstory on that, in case you've ever seen them and were wondering where they came from. Parker was... He made me angry one minute. <laughs> He's lying. He was what, three, Joe? Maybe four. Probably four. Four years old. And I was still working a full-time job, and Joe was in the Coast Guard. But Joe happened to be home that day, and I was at work. So he was with Parker, and he was working in the garage. We had a huge, like, 18-foot trailer with a huge metal ramp that locked into place when you weren't using it on the trailer. And Joe was working in the garage, and little Parker asked Dad, what happens if I, can I pull the pin out? of the trailer ramp and of course Joe was like no buddy don't touch that that's it'll give you owies don't don't touch that and Joe said like 10 seconds later he just heard a crash and he looks over and Parker is on the cement in the garage pinned under the trailer ramp so he went over as children do and he didn't listen and he pulled the pin to see what would happen and the ramp came down on his head and crushed him so next thing I know Joe is calling me at work and all I remember is him saying Parker trailer emergency room and, and I can hear Joe's voice and you guys know Joe's a quiet guy right so not much expression so the sound of his voice was very frantic and I knew something bad had happened so I rushed to the ER from work and Parker ended up having to get um, staples in his head right there so they did x-rays and all that and he didn't have any major damage but his whole side of his face had like road rash I mean when I got to the ER it looked horrible there was blood everywhere his whole face he had these huge gouges missing in his head and they had to put staples in there so he had the staples for what about a week Joe I think about a week and then he had to go back and get the staples removed so that's what happened to Parker's little head he has been prone to little head injuries all of his life <laughs> We got smart, a little fold up table, got a wash bucket, a rinse bucket, and the dryer bag. This is so much better <laughs> than squatting down on the ground like I used to do dishes. I can actually stand and it doesn't kill my knees and my back to do dishes. I'm super excited about this. It's the little things, right?
Parker, <laughs> are you excited? Yeah. You got your little 22? Yeah. Maybe you'll see some grouse while you're out there, huh? Mm -hmm. Gotta keep an eye out. Gotta be super quiet, okay? Okay. Make sure you listen to Dad. Yeah. Everything he says, right? Yeah. Okay. You're excited? Look at you in your little hunting outfit. <laughs> <laughs> and I got my jacket, my ammo, and then a lighter and some chapstick in there. And you got your beanie? Mm hmm And, and my your, gloves. And your gloves. And, and your scarf. scarf. Good, because it might get chilly. Yeah. Thankfully, it's not raining, though. I know. Perfect for hunting, huh? Yeah. Yesterday was not the day. No, yesterday it rained a lot. It was very yeah. cold. It's worse when you're wet. Uh-huh. So I'm glad it's not raining today. Yeah. Well, you have fun, okay? All right. And I'll say a prayer for you guys. You be careful. And I'll see you tonight. Yeah. Okay. I love you. Love you. Have fun. All right. Joe. What? Make sure you take care of my baby now, you hear? Okay. I'll leave him in the woods. <laughs> oh, no. You I'll leave him in the woods. Teach him a lesson. Rite of passage. Okay. <laughs> all right, Joe. You guys are looking all hunty and stuff. Stop. Yeah. You go get me a moose. Label. Give me a boost, Joe. Give me a boost. <laughs> All right, guys. I love you. Love you. Be careful. All right. Farewell. I love you. I'll Bye. see you next season. While Joe and Parker are out having some father-son time, Kellen and I are going to rearrange a few things in the cabin to make some more space. And then I decided I also wanted to clean up. There's a lot of, you know, spider webs and dead flies and things like that throughout the cabin. So whenever we come out, I do like to vacuum, dust, and clean up. And the other thing I really wanted to do was organize some of the things in the kitchen. Like, you know, this towel. I don't know how long this has been here. This is this was here when we bought the cabin. And this little tub Tupperware drawer set has some random things that the sellers left and most of this stuff is from them and I'd like to go through it and organize it, get rid of what we don't want and need so that we have more space for the things that we would like to have out of the cabin. Like I don't think I'll be using this baking powder. This was from 2015. So there is like pancake mix and all kinds of stuff out here that's super old that while might be okay if you ate it, I'd rather not. And then just random stuff in the drawers, some things that we're gonna keep and hang on to, but that we don't need, you know what I'm saying? And there's like medicine, things that are probably still good. So we'll still hang on to some of that because after all, if someone were to stumble upon our cabin in the middle of winter in a survival situation, it would be really good to have this kind of stuff out here. This appears to be the dental drawer. So they had, you know, mouthwash, some unopened toothbrushes, dental floss, and then what do you know? They've got some mints in case you like to have some fresh breath. <laughs> but I'm going to keep some of this stuff, get rid of some of it, and just kind of organize it so we've got a little bit more space.
All right, that looks a lot better. Now that I'm done cleaning up a bit, I'm gonna make some hot broth and I'm gonna add some of my daily minerals to it. I'll link this for you guys. I love this liquid mineral. I can just add it to a hot cup of chicken broth and get it down and it's just a great way to supplement in case you're missing out on any of those essential minerals throughout the day. So Callan has talked me into playing a game of phase 10, so we're gonna get at it. I'm gonna get started on my preps for my homemade cornbread tonight. I've got my leaven that has been on the counter for a few hours since this morning. This is a long fermented cornbread recipe, so it's a little bit tangy, super good. I'll make sure to link it for you guys. I'm using einkorn flour today for this recipe, and it's kind of an all day thing, but I think it makes it taste even better. So Kellen and I just played a little phase 10. We're about halfway through and we're tied, aren't we Kellen? Yeah. So he's actually really, really good at phase 10. I taught him phase 10 last time we were out at the cabin and it's his favorite game all the time. Missy, can we play phase 10? Right Kellen? Yeah. So he's in heaven today because he has me all to himself and we can play phase 10 all day. So we just got done. Um, eating some lunch and I just had a little sandwich with some apples and Kellen had some taquitos with apples and I got my uh, dough going for the cornbread tonight. This is a homemade cornbread recipe, super fluffy and moist made with yogurt and mm, it's so good making it with einkorn flour. So I'll link that recipe in the video description. So much better than the little cheap Jiffy box cornbreads. Trust me when I tell you homemade cornbread is the bomb. So I got that going. That's going to be for a chili dinner tonight. And I am going to go out to the outhouse. The back portion of the outhouse is kind of like our little generator shed area. And uh, I've got to turn the generator off. I had it on earlier while I was cleaning because I vacuumed the cabin, vacuumed all the window sills and everything because we just get a ton of... They're trying to find Joe. <laughs> The dogs are trying to find Joe. But we get a ton of dead flies every time. It doesn't matter how much we clean the cabin. Every time we come back, there's dead flies. And then this time, dead mosquitoes because we just finished summer and now the mosquitoes are all gone. So I got all that vacuumed up and got my phone fully charged. Even though we don't get a signal out here, I wanna make sure it's charged for our trip back when we head back. So we're gonna go out and turn off the generator. And we have a bunch of stuff that I took out of the cabin today that we're gonna keep so I'm gonna put this stuff in the generator shed and just kind of clean up the porch a little bit. Oh, you got it, Kelly? Yeah. All right. You're so strong. Thank you. Uh -oh. Watch your step. Yesterday, Kellen fell down these stairs. It was raining and oh. the stairs are super slippery when it's wet. And he fell down and hit his little butt on this bottom step here. There's not much room in this little generator shed. Like this is it. <laughs> I'm literally turning and this is like this space, but it does give Joe a little spot to put his tools and whatever else he needs and a little counter space to work if he needs to. So, you know, we're not complaining. So this is where the generator lives. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that is, Kellen. This is from the previous this is from the owners that had the cabin before us. Oh yeah, it has like a hole in the seat. I don't really know. Or is it like an outhouse? It is an outhouse. Bradley, no. Bradley, get back. Is it no. It's like, <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> it's literally an old outhouse seat area. I mean, how funny is that? Is that good, B? Oh, you're getting soaking wet. Is 
this used to be the old wood stove in the living room. And it was sitting right in the center of the living room, which I find to be really inconvenient, but the previous owners decided to take it out and put in that big oil heater. But look at this bad boy. <laughs> Talk about rustic. <laughs> Here's the, the oil barrel for the heater, and this is the propane that we use for the oven and the stove. And this also lights up those lantern lights that are attached to the walls in the cabin, which I think are super cute and rustic. So the other side of the generator shed is the outhouse. Shown this to you guys, but I know some of you might be new to the channel. It's got this little glass door to let in some natural lighting. And that's it. Just a little outhouse. I think it's kind of fancy for an outhouse. Never thought I'd poop in an outhouse, you know? Just, uh, I, you know, it's it's like a porta potty, but porta potties, in my opinion, are gross. Er, because so many people use them especially if they don't get emptied on a regular basis. But this outhouse has been here for a very long time. Uh, I am assuming as long as this cabin has been here, the cabin's been here for just over 30 years. So the outhouse never stinks. And I don't know how that's possible. It's, it's crazy. Like it just doesn't stink. It's clean. It's open. And because of the natural lighting from the door, you don't feel like you're kind of boxed into this nasty outhouse. We just randomly put in like, cat litter odorizer deodorizer in here and there and uh we've just never had any issues with it i don't know we'll see how how many years we can use it without having to do anything with it but it's it's a pretty sound little structure pretty fancy for an outhouse and i love that it's got the extra suction for joe to keep the generator Well, as it turns out, don't you know, Parker and Joe didn't get a moose today. They didn't get any spruce grouse and they didn't even catch a fish. <laughs> and that is the way it goes, right? So today it's looking like a chili dinner with homemade cornbread, it is. But they had a blast and they had some great quality time together and that's all that matters.
In our family, we have a little thing we say. Whenever we see a dragonfly, that is my grandpa coming back to say hello. And whenever we see a butterfly, that's Joe's mom, Diana, coming to say hello. She passed away in 2011 from brain cancer. And this was just super sweet. Parker ran inside and was like, Mom, it's Grandma Di. So today we got to see both of them. They came and visited us at the remote cabin. It was super sweet. Are too big. Can I get some comfort, please? I guess I should have been honest. It breaks in my heart. It's weighing me down, baby. I'm like a river that's overflowed. The sooner you know it, the less do we hurt. Let me speak the truth. too late, but I can see past the rain, won't you lay it on me, turn the page and burn it, let's make up a big bonfire, on the beach with the stars as our lighters, and throw our problems in the Don't look at me when I'm recording my intro. Mm. We are not that bored yet, Joe. What are you doing, Loretta? Uh-uh. You taking the earrings mm. out? You about to get crazy? <laughs> Say goodbye, Kevin. Why are you smiling? Kellen, don't look at the camera, Kellen. <laughs>
like a loser just by looking at me. <laughs> Ready? One. Let me wait. Two. Three. <laughs> Why aren't you laughing? Why aren't you laughing? Are you serious? <laughs> What? You look like Tarzan. Stop talking when I'm trying to get the B-roll, Joe. <laughs> 